Hi there gamers, it's Alex here for Notebook Check Reviews. And as you can see, this is not a notebook, but rather KFA2's variant of one of the best GPUs you can currently get if you have the money to spare. I am talking about Nvidia's RTX 4080 of course, and we will tell you in our review how it compares against last year's offerings and how it fares against AMD's RDNA-free competition. Since this is our very first desktop GPU review here on YouTube, please feel free to let us know what you think we missed or want to see included in future videos. Before we get into the review, we have to talk about pricing to get it out of the way. This GPU is expensive. There's just no way to sugarcoat this because this one comes in at almost 1400 euros at the time of filming, which isn't that far off the 3090's MSRP when it launched a few years ago. So while we will spend the rest of the review talking about what this guy brings to the table, keep the price point in mind. But let's circle back to the good stuff for now. While KFA2's offerings are usually more known to cater to a more budget-oriented crowd, the SG model doesn't have to hide from the competition. Like most of the 4090s we have seen so far, this one also comes with a massive 4-slot cooler and the dimensions of the card are simply insane. Especially if you put it in perspective with AMD's latest offerings. The card is well made and while you won't handle it that often, build quality feels the part as well. The overall design language strikes a careful balance between gamer and clean with your fair share of RGB lighting. Alongside the card, KFA2 includes an additional external fan for even more cooling potential and an RGB illuminated support. Well, both aren't necessarily needed, especially this little support thing looks absolutely awesome if you ask me. As a nice touch, you can connect all the RGB to your motherboard so you can omit at least one more piece of RGB software. Regarding display connections, the SG comes with one HDMI 2.1a and three display ports in the 1.4a standard. The GPU die itself is the smaller AD103 core rated for 320 watts of power consumption alongside 16 GB of VRAM. Our official test system for all of the benchmark results you will see is powered by an AMD Ryzen 9 7950X on the Gigabyte X670E Master with 32 GB of G-Skill Trident C DDR5 6000 memory. The system you will see in our B-roll is my own rig and was just used for eye candy's sake. Alright folks, let's talk performance. In Synthetix, the KFA2 RTX 4080 SG performs on par with Nvidia's Founders Edition and sits about 11% above the AMD RX 7900 XTX in our performance rating, while its bigger brother, the RTX 4090, is up to 25% faster. Our performance rating in this case is a combined score of several 3DMark benchmarks, Unigen, Superposition, Heaven and Valet, as well as 3DMark 11. Should you be interested in individual scores, please make sure to head over to our written review, linked in the caption below. Before we get to the gaming benchmarks, let's look at some professional and content creation numbers. Luxmark paints a similar picture as our Synthetix, where the smaller ADA chips get similarly compared to the 4090, while all the Nvidia cards can easily pull ahead from the AMD offerings. Specview Perf, on the other hand, is a clear win for the AMD cards, with both offerings trading blows in Compute Mark. While the high end AMD will give you marginally better performance in Photoshop, Premiere Pro is again a clear win for Team Green, and so is Blender, of course. I also tested the AMD card and the new RTX 4080 for our video production. Both timeline performance and export times have been on par for both cards with no clear winner, but absolutely solid performance for either manufacturer. So should you want to use the 4080 for work or content creation, it really depends on the applications you use, but under no circumstance will this one leave you wanting for a lot more. Chances are that you buy one of these more for entertainment than work though, so let's have a look at real world gaming performance. In traditionally rasterized games, with outray tracing and the help of DLSS, KFA2's 4080 is already a beast of a GPU, crunching easily through almost all games at 4K and at least 60fps. The 4090 has a very comfortable lead overall, while AMD's 7900 XTX is trading close with the smaller Nvidia card, with both of them sitting within spitting distance of each other. Ray tracing is traditionally known to perform better in general on Nvidia cards. 
and this holds true for most titles, even if we notice a few exceptions here and there. In Callisto Protocol at 1080p, the RX 7900XTX scored a 13% lead over the 4080, while Nvidia is offering is more than 40% faster in Cyberpunk in 4K than the AMD counterpart. So it really depends on the game you're playing and the resolution. While we usually compare benchmarks without the use of DLSS to make scores better comparable, there's no denying what Nvidia's upscaling tech brings to the table. Especially DLSS free, which is only available on the new 4000 series GPUs, can sometimes easily double frame rates with frame generation. In a Plague Tale Requiem, this takes FPS from around 80 to 90 to way above 160. And in the Witcher 3's next-gen update, FPS gains are very similar. If you want to game in 4K and do not want to live without ray tracing, there's also no way around DLSS in general. While the KFA2 SG4080 only scored a hardly playable 30 FPS in Cyberpunk in its highest settings, DLSS takes things to a much smoother 53 FPS. If you want to get an even better overview about the RTX 4080's performance in your favorite games, again, please head over to our written review. My colleague Sebastian tested a ton of different games at different resolutions to give you guys a detailed idea about what to expect from this absolute unit of a card. When it comes to noise and power consumption, the 4-slot cooling design seems to do the trick without any problems. The card stays quite cool and we also did some noise samples for you so you can get an idea. During our stress test and our Witcher 3 test, we measured a maximum power draw of around 460 watts. This is actually fairly efficient considering the performance you get for this puppy. And in my case, I was even able to run the 4080 with an i9-12900K and a 750 watts power supply. Even if we would recommend getting at least an 850 watt unit to be safe. Alright folks, let's wrap this up. Is the KFA2 RTX 4080 SG a good GPU? Not really, since it's actually a great one that delivers simply amazing performance even in 4K. While it of course can't quite match the 4090, it sits comfortably between AMD's new offerings when it comes to traditional rasterized games. Turn on ray tracing and it's ahead in most titles, and with DLSS and frame generation, it is not even a competition anymore. KFA2's design for their 4080 variant is also a solid option, should you be in the market for a new GPU. With low fan noise, a clean shroud and backplate design and optional RGB accessories, you will easily be able to customize the card's look to your heart's desire. That said, pricing is still the elephant in the room and all that performance does not come cheap. And at this point it is really hard to recommend any of these cards that are priced well above 1000 bucks for pure gaming needs. Should you own a 4K or high refresh rate QHD panel and you want the highest FPS numbers possible at the highest settings, well these are the cards for you. That would be it for today. Please let us know what you think about GPU prices at the moment. Will you wait for the lower end models for both AMD and Nvidia? Or did you buy a next gen card already? Or will you just skip this generation entirely? Please sound off in the comments below. Thanks a ton for watching and please consider liking the video and subscribe to the channel. My name is Alex, you have been amazing and I can't wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.